Hey, it's me, PK King. I love designing characters. I also like fighting games, so you know what that means. Character's moveset consists of all the different attacks, specials, gimmicks, and unique defensive options a character could have. Developing these probably has to be my favorite part, so I want to walk you through my process and help you out a little. To keep it simple, I'll be using my current project, Tyson, as an example. Tyson comes from Typha, which is, you know, cattails, Holstein, the type of cow, and Tyson kind of sounds like tasty, and it's also close to Tyson, which is like the food brand, which is kind of funny, because fire cow. <laughs> so his name's technically Tysteen, but that sounds weird, so Tysteen. Design and movesets are linked, whether you like it or not. So their clothing, their physique, their weapons, colors, that all affects their moveset. Think of these two processes together. It doesn't matter which one necessarily comes first though. Like with Lodent, I knew I wanted a small, fast flying, overwhelming playstyle, and then I had the design. And then with Alara, I knew I wanted a capoeira dancing moveset, so I picked, you know, the animal with long legs. <laughs> Tyson's kind of the opposite though. I originally made him as a placeholder for storyboarding Lo Lodin's trailer, but then I kind of became attached. As you know, that's how it goes. So I already had the design. You need to also be able to be fluid with the design and change it when need be, because I definitely did change Tyson's design since then. What the fuck? Keep in mind color. I used mainly green because it contrasts his red horns, and his pale, like yellow skin is to keep the color palette small because it's the same color as the cattail fluff. It's also a compliment to the green color as well. He's symmetrical because non-symmetrical designs are kind of annoying, um, and I like to think that one of the tags on his ear is real and the other one's fake he just wanted two to match, and there's probably some sort of branding mark under his flannel like on his thigh. In the trailer, he already has some abilities that he uses, like the fire horns, so I knew that had to be in the moveset somewhere. Also his stature, he's pretty buff, so I'm not gonna give him a gun or something, I need to figure out like what he could be doing to like make that make sense, like punching or kicking, that might be too obvious, so I might want to make it like some unique kicks or leg grabs even he already has the horn grabs so maybe he could just be a grappler right i don't know these were all my first thoughts so try not to get too attached to these i didn't want him to really like have a weapon and if he did it needs to be something that like supports the need for all those muscles um which kind of leads into I know, I know, it's the meme, but please hear me out, don't leave the video. Knowing your character's history, personality, goals, all that stuff is super important to their characterization and how that's reflected in their animations, how they hold things, their speed, their focus, their seriousness or lack of seriousness, if they're scary or cute, all those things. Those can all affect their speed, the style of their moves, which affects frame data, and it, on and on and on, it, it's important. The thing with Rivals and Lore though is time periods, there's kind of two timelines going on. Tyson is technically from the future timeline like Claren, so initially I was going to give him a plasma weapon of sorts, but I just didn't really like that style too much and I wanted him to oppose Lodent because in their story they interact a lot and I want to make that conflict interesting by opposing them in almost every area, design wise using totally different colors, statures, um, play style, texture, you know Tyson's more of a strong, slower type, things like that. I also wanted to give him more of like a natural weapon, something that would go well with fire horns, but how do I explain that? I don't know. Well, I had no idea, until one day I was in the park with my boyfriend, and he left, came back, and he was like, oh, I want to show you something. It was a cattail. He just wanted to play with it, but my mind exploded with possibilities. He can rip it and set the fluff on fire to control the sky, or he can throw it like little grenades, or he can hide inside the fluff, or he can get fluff on other people to make them slow or increase their damage, or maybe it could be like a wand that he swings around. Most of these ideas didn't go anywhere, but I was still excited to brainstorm them more and more and more. Because I really, I just need that one core idea, and then from there I can branch off. So I decided to make the cattail just huge to explain his stature. I know, it's a cattail. It's probably still kind of light. Let's just imagine it's heavy, like a sandbag or a punching bag or something like that. And obviously with something that big, you have to swing it, so that will be most attacks. To promote aggressive play, I'll make it so his fluff only appears when you hit an opponent, like you're breaking it over their head. The fluff will stay into the air, similar to forest burn smoke, but more like transparent. Alone it doesn't do anything though, the threatening part is when you light it on fire. Cattails are very flammable, and are most commonly burned as like a natural bug repellent, so I think it would be really cool if the fire spread across through the sky, like through the fluff, dragging your opponent with it. 
this is the perfect counter to Loden's gameplay of like flying through the sky, overwhelming you with projectiles and setting up fields. Loden will have to outsmart Tyson with all his tools, and that's how it would work like in lore, so it kind of makes sense. Okay, cool. All this about lore. How does a cattail make sense lore wise? Okay, well, this is what. Let me explain. <laughs> So in the future, right, Loxodont takes over, Fire Capital takes over, I assume they have some sort of farm reserves with plant life, things like that, to monopolize them and have, you know, 100% complete control. So don't sit there and tell me that Loxodont is above forced unpaid labor. This is where Tyson was born into. He doesn't know his parents, he was just born and he's farming cattails for the fluff inside and for the stock for food and they even have like slimy gel similar to like aloe vera i feel like fire capital would need that a lot for burns <laughs> i don't know maybe <laughs> he got so buff by working out with like the biggest cattails he can find whenever he had free time but also the work he was doing was just hard labor so he needed to be like fairly built in order to do that good this is also why his horns are cut it was to prevent fighting among the different workers like they do with real cows and i like to imagine some of their firepower is stored in their horns so that was also to limit that Growing up here obviously sounds horrible, so I imagine Tyson has a lot of trauma, and through the sheer anger alone of having to deal with what he has dealt with, he can summon his fire for small amounts of time. It's kind of like the whole thing with Claren's passion, you know, he has this strong anger instead. Tyson's potential to do this intrigued Loxodont, and that's why he had him promoted to be a security guard, which is where you see him in Loden's trailer. That's also why he uses a cattail, it's like an extension of his flames. He can't fully control his flames, so he uses the cattail to sort of guide it. Also, if you flip him over on his jacket, you, just, you see what I did there? <laughs> that also explains his gloves and his boots, because all of that was done in shallow water because, you know, cattails, so he needed boots, he needs gloves. Anyways, back to the weapon. He fights with a giant cattail. When he hits people with it, it makes fluff in the air. He can set that fluff on fire for chain reactions. Do you see what I did there? Now I have a central gimmick to build the rest of the moveset around. So let's start with the specials. Yes, the specials. Besides the gimmicks, the specials are the most unique attributes your character has. In my opinions, your normals should support the specials and the specials should support the gimmick. It should kind of be this ladder kind of thing. Well, we want horns, right? What could that be? That could be the uppy. That could be good uppy. Maybe we can angle it like he did in the trailer. Um, yeah, but I don't know. In the trailer, he also charged it, and I like the charge. I think it would be kind of hard to charge in the air for your recovery. It would leave you vulnerable, and it just wouldn't be super reliable. So it could be the downbeat instead, and just put him in free fall if he misses. So it's still an option for recovery, but it's not the one you need to rely on. With that, his actual uppy doesn't need to be anything super useful distance-wise, but I still want it to be kind of strong, because I figure his up air is probably going to be like a weak cattail move, so he needs a strong upward option. I was thinking it could be a, like a headbutt or head swing to double as a grounded defensive option, kind of like a flash kick but just with his head. He's also a cow, so you know, headbutting like this, that this is what cows do, it has to be somewhere. This move would also still have his horns, so it would set things on fire, but we'll get into that. Actually speaking of that, to aid his recovery, maybe the fire from the fluff can push you instead of damaging you. That might be a little too strong, and it might be a little annoying, so we'll circle back to it, but I think that I think that could be kind of cool. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Okay, that's cool, but what if you can't hit your opponent? You just don't get fluff at all? That's lame. No. So side B, you just rip the cattail yourself and send a wave of it forward. You have to charge this, um, at least to make a lot of it, because it can't be a better option than just hitting your opponent, but I do want it to still be there so you can do it in the air, get it in places you otherwise couldn't have gotten it, things like that. Okay, cool. How do you set it off? Well, back to down B. Using down B in the fluff area will set it ablaze because of your horn. You can also dash through the fluff like with your horns to set all that fluff on fire. Also, successfully hitting down B will grab your opponent. Like, you know, like this. Once you have them, you can throw them in one of four directions. Once you throw them, they will still be on fire, like Zelda Burn's ability. While they're in that fire state, if they go inside of a fluff area, they will set it off. So, you can have fluff out there, grab them, throw them into it, and they will set off the fire themselves, and it will, like, take them away. 
That also means when you hit somebody with a cattail while they're on this fire state, it will instantly set ablaze that that fluff that is created. Honestly, I like that. That could turn like the first hit after they're on fire into a multi-hit. Okay, but what if you can't hit down B and you want to set it off without propfall, so you don't want to use up B? Fine, let's just say um, he digs his big nose in the cattail and sneezes because he's allergic, which summons his horns, giving him a small boost in the air. Sure, maybe it's not anger. Maybe this whole time he's only been able to summon his fire powers because he's been allergic to the cattails and his sneezing makes fire appear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But honestly, I do think this would be good to kind of keep that momentum quickly, have like a small hitbox that's not super strong, but um, will set things on fire right when you need them, because again, you need to have that control to set what you want on fire when you want to. There, specials are done. <laughs> there aren't as many problems to fix with the normals, thankfully, but there are a couple things that we need to talk about. Like, you need to have options to get fluff exactly where you want it. So, you know, he'll have pretty good fundamentals because he can't have any crazy moves where you don't know where the fluff is going to be. But um, we need to make sure that these all hit different areas. So let's start with the tilts first. For a tilt, it's kind of like a snapping whip motion that goes a bit further forward than you'd think. It's kind of the same with down tilt, but obviously down. I like to imagine it like when you pull back a ruler and you let it go and it slaps your friend's back or something like that. I like I like to think it's like that, but downwards. Up tilt is more of a swing. He kind of drops it on one side and like swings it over on the other side this is honestly more to get them in the air if anything because getting them in the air is very important for Tyson's moveset and his gimmick but also it will reach all the way on top of you it might take a little longer it's like more at the end of the move but it will hit straight above you job one and two and rivals are normally canceled into other tilts so you know like they won't use the cattail the first one could just be a really quick like short ranged option like a little uppercut again getting them up in the sky and then the second one is a longer reaching punch I like this longer reaching punch because it leads perfectly into jab three, which is a head arm throw with the cattail. So, you know, instead of having Tyson be a grappler and grapple opponents, I wanted him to be a grappler and grapple his cattail and then use it as a weapon. You like Mario's like back throw when he swings someone around and how that can hit you. That energy. I like that energy. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so he does this head arm throw right here and kind of lands on the floor for a little bit. This will get the fluff right on you, like where you were super close, as opposed to four tilts further away. So once you jab one, jab two, from there, basically, you can decide where do you want the fluff to be and then move on from there. Okay, let's blast through the rest. Down Strong has him rip the cattails into two and slam it on either side of him. Yes, he rips the stem too, don't ask me how. F Strong is sort of like a Banjo-Kazooie forward splash, just like a really strong slam onto the ground. And Up Smash has him tear it in the middle and twist it like horizontally for this multi-hit move. I also think the fluffs will place the fluffs. Hmm. I also think the strongs will place fluff regardless, because I kind of reference them after kids just playing with cattails, twisting them, pulling them, slamming them, things like that. And that would, you know, you can see it. You can see the fluff. It's going to make fluff anyway. I don't think this is more viable than hitting your opponent or more viable than using side B. It's just more like a small little bonus. Dash attack is a shoulder bash. I want to make it jump cancelable. So it's kind of like Wario, but he does a little jump first, lands right on them. And then that kind of, maybe not jump cancelable, but it bounces him like in the air after he successfully hits with it. So you can probably like get that straight into like a forward air or something right after. Speaking of, forward air is your quick drag across the stage, a swiping move. Think like Smash 4 Sheik. I really love that like forward air, forward air, forward air, and just bring your opponent wherever you want. It will be a bit slower than Sheik, obviously, but um, that's the idea. Back air is a slower kill move, which normally back airs are, so if that's what you're thinking, that's good. I made it sort of like a battering ram with the cattail itself, so he brings it over himself and twists like behind him. At the end of the day, he's hitting you with the cattail, it's not gonna hurt that bad. For a cattail move, that's probably his strongest move with the cattail, that's not a smash attack. Down air is like palms, but strong, it's like a three kick hit at like at this like side angle there's no real need for fluff downwards because you can just hit your opponent on the ground you don't really need a downward fluff move and these also won't spike they'll send upwards or a bit forward i have a bad habit of putting spikes on like every move that doesn't need it <laughs> so i'm trying not to do that <laughs> Near he turns and does this sort of split kick in the air. I realized that he really needed a quick 
burst move with little to no commitment also one that didn't have fire or didn't have fluff i know his downer is like that but that's more for like setting up vertically not really for setting up horizontally as important as it is to get fluff where you want it you need to be able to get your character where you want it and if while you're doing that you're constantly placing fluff where you don't want to or you're setting fluff on fire that could potentially be pushing you around or hitting your opponent the wrong way or setting off chains that you didn't want to be set off yet it's just it could get too overwhelming so he needed some quick burst non um, committal option and that's going to be his nair up here we'll have him toss up and spin the cattail but this time vertically for a lot more range a lot more destroying range obviously it's destroying it i didn't say that but it is this will also start with a bit of an uppercut so he can use it to scoop opponents that's just so he has more ways to get your opponent in the sky in the first place it's also a huge multi-hit move so it's going to be really good for juggling and things like that i think this is just going to be a really good move for him and sure there's stuff like final smash buddy but i'm not gonna be worrying about that just yet i'm just talking about the main moveset here and for the main moveset that's pretty much it but that's not all don't leave yet i'm not gonna sit here and act like i knew all of this at the spot okay a lot has changed maybe some moves i thought were cooler than other moves or some moves i thought were too samey maybe i just wanted to change the way that he was played i've changed his moveset a lot and i've been i'm hoping i've been showing pictures of old drawings of tyson and old moves that he used to have and different ideas that i had because things change he was going to be a stance character originally where neutral b just gave you horns and you had horns the whole time and then neutral b you could take the horns away like so many stuff has changed so please don't be afraid to change it don't be afraid to change your character's moveset don't be afraid if you have a new idea you see something new you want to change it do it it's not a bad thing it's a good thing change change is good now another reason why i changed my character a lot and this isn't too important so i don't want you to worry about this but i wanted to mention it is that i didn't want him to be too similar to other characters on the workshop for example reichenburn he is another buffalo bull type character that works in fire capital and is visually similar and muscular and has a visually similar gimmick so instantly i'm like i need to make sure they're not literally the same <laughs> for the gimmick alone i need to make sure that okay the fluff is probably going to be less dense than the smoke that reichenburn has and also i was thinking maybe it can move a little bit like it does in the wind like every frame it could just kind of gently move to the right slowly and slowly just again to like make it a little different instead of like slowly moving up or slowly moving away or anything like that Tyson also had a lot more grabs in his moveset um a lot of them were like leg grabs and things like that but he did have like an up air grab similar to like Edelis but again felt too similar to Reichenburn which is why I gave him a lot of leg grabs before but even those I just didn't really vibe with he also before had a drop kick back air but then I took that away because you know Reichenburn has a drop kick further so <laughs> and then even stuff like dash attack is a shoulder bash so I made it less of like a shoulder like run through bash and more of like a bounce up shoulder bash there's another character that came out during the process of me making Tyson's moveset called Stinker. They've gotten a lot of changes recently, actually, but this base idea of making clouds and then exploding them was just too similar for me. So that's a big reason why Tyson's fluff works the way it does. It's in like smaller batches, so it can make like weirder shape potentials. The way it explodes is slower and in like a chain reaction that slowly carries your opponent and obviously does damage to them, but it's not like a burst big explosion like Stinker is. The idea is to also have a lot more of it. Obviously there will be a limit on how much fluff you can have, but um, it will, there will probably be more on the stage at any given time than Stinker's Clouds will be. Again, it's not a huge deal if your character like has a similar gimmick to another character. It's not the end of the world. I personally just wanted to be respectful to these two creators and whoever helped make these characters because I love these characters and I just wanted to be respectful. I also wanted it to be an excuse to change things about my character. Because without these characters, I wouldn't have felt the need to change anything, or at least a lot of things, and Tyson wouldn't be the character he is right now. The ideas I have with him now, the things I want to do with him, I'm so excited, and I only had those ideas because I was differentiating him from Reichenburn and Stinker. So honestly, like, thank you to these two. If you want to get, like, a general idea of how Tyson might play in the future when he's, you know, more ready, go play them. <laughs> I could go on, but you get the idea, okay? Um, movesets are tied to every aspect of your character, so don't isolate it. Think of the way you want your character to be played, give them the resources to do that, and then reward the player for using them correctly. 
I hope this helped. Uh, feel free to DM me about any moveset ideas and things like that that you might have for any of your characters, and we can talk about it. I love doing that. I do that all the time. If there's any other part of the character creation pipeline you want me to go over, let me know. I have my own ideas and things I want to talk about, but if you have something, maybe I didn't think about it, or maybe it's a bigger priority than I thought it was, so just let me know. Um, but I think I'm done here. I will keep you updated with progress on Tyson, and if you really want, like, right away updates follow me on twitter or check the discord i will try to post every animation i do right when i do it in the discord in work in progress i want to get good at doing that and just being active in the discord more often so also you should do that um and i'll see you today tomorrow next month next week on the discord on twitter i don't know we'll see thank you i love you all maybe i'll see you never bye <laughs>